Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, Earthlings, Peeplings. I hope you're all having a great day. I'm feeling much, much better today, thanks to you guys, actually. It really is largely thanks to you guys. Um, I, I don't know what's the matter with me. Anyway, you don't want to hear all about that, apart from the fact that I really, really appreciate you all so much. Before I started making videos, and when I used to just watch Wally, Oh, and by the way, I did hear from Wally a couple of weeks ago. Uh, she's got a Patreon um, for updates. I'll, I'll put a link in the description. And she's had a few personal problems. Her channel is still there. So she's fine. This is um, She's taking a break, as a lot of people do, because being a YouTuber is not easy. Not for anybody. You know, I'm aware there's been a big woo, uh, fur flying recently, but it's not easy for anybody out there who's got a YouTube channel. And equally, it's not really easy for any of you guys that comment, because you never know if you're going to get jumped on, if your comment's going to be allowed, if it's going to be deleted by some mysterious YouTube algorithm. Um, so life, life is, well, life's like that in the real world, really, isn't it? It's not always easy. We all know that. Work colleagues, family. Oh, talking of family, Harry. <laughs> right yes I am delighted with that and that has cheered me up as well Harry Harry is going away for a dirty weekend no I'm sure not he's going with a group of friends to the mountains in California well nobody knows I would say for once that's very much Harry's business that's his private business and whatever he's doing and I know a lot of you are not going to like me saying this because he has an awful lot to answer for. I, for one, hope that whatever he does, he has a bloody good weekend wherever he goes. Just, just have a great birthday. Get pissed. Shag girls. Oh, no, sorry. He's a married man. No, don't do that, Harry. No, um, be with nature. <laughs> be with your a listers. No, no, Hazza. You do what you like. You do what you like. It's your birthday. You're in the shit with everybody anyway. So you might as well enjoy your birthday. Have a lovely weekend, wherever that may be. Could be in America, could be in the UK. I don't know. Um, perhaps he's found his balls. Very interesting yesterday, there was a puff piece and I've completely forgotten which one it was, but I did post it on my ex account where it said, a spokesman for the Duke of Sussex said, and then the quote was in first person, which that, it, right now I was never very good at school with English and stuff like that. So I don't know how to explain things. I mean, I didn't know what the definite article was until I was about 35. <coughs> Such as a private school education at St Mary's Hall. No names mentioned. Doesn't exist anymore. Can't think why. Um, I mean, I, I didn't know. I still don't know. what <laughs> I used to think a pronoun was the same as a proverb. I swear to God. Um, but first person is like, when I talk as me... Uh, I'm Fiona, I am going to go and do that. If I were to talk in about myself in third person, I'd say, Fiona is displeased. I think that's the right way. But what, so what I've noticed, and I'm finding this quite difficult to explain, is that when I read all these articles, you know, I read a lot of them, spokesperson normally speaks about the person because they're speaking on behalf of the person. But this one, it said... I love my children. The best gift in the world was getting married. I'm so in love with my wife. It was almost like, oh, he loves his children and me and he wants to be with me. That's the way it came across. It was rather a Freudian slip. Perhaps tensions are high. Perhaps stresses are high in certain quarters and panicking somewhat that they haven't got a bloody clue where Harry is. So they thought they'd release a statement this is just my imagination, right, by the way. And, you know, usual disclaimer, I might be full of shit. I'm just, I'm like one of you guys. I'm an audience member. We're all sitting in a group, scratching our heads for fun, trying to work out what's going on here because these people put out these puff pieces. So, you know, we're allowed to discuss it. If they never said a word about it, if they were total Howard Hughes, anyone who can remember that guy, uh, and did, you're reclusive. No one would actually be talking about them. But there's puff piece, puff piece, puff piece. 
Um, so I'm imagining that he's nowhere near her and she hasn't got a clue what's going on. I said, I've actually seen puff pieces going out going, is he at Althorpe? Could he be with Earl Spencer? What's going on? Mm, yes. And also you have to um, try and imagine if Meghan and Harry aren't together and she hasn't got a bloody clue. I think that some PR is sending subliminal messages, not, not to us lot, the reader, the audience, but to the other person. Now, I felt she was, Megan was doing this years ago when she had the lilac outfit. She gave some weird speech with clearly CGI lilac flowers blowing in the wind behind her with a fan, an electric fan. You could actually hear it blowing her, her hair in synchronized with the flowers in the background and she was talking I don't well I can't remember because you know it was word salad but as I watched it I thought I really felt at that point point he'd left her right um, and that she was pulling on his art strings to come back which if I'm right he did and then it came out later oh she'd had a miscarriage and all that you know so um, I kind of felt, yeah, you know, she's she's lost a little bit of control in the past, you know. You know, we all know how these relationships can be. But I mean, <laughs> I'm sensing a big loss of control here. And as you all know, I mean, I'm not seeing any physical pictures of them together, convincing ones. Oh boy, they like to go on about our prince and princess of Wales, our royal family and photoshopping. <laughs> Flaming cheek, innit? Um... It's a bit like Hitler criticising the head rabbi for being a bit naughty with his parishioners. I mean, any, any, anyway, yeah, I know YouTube won't like that, will they? Um, so I'm not seeing any evidence that he's really with her. And for about, I think it's a week, is it a week that we've all been discussing? And a lot of you in the comments have said you're not convinced he's back in the States either. There's not much gets past you guys. So, um... Today, it comes out, it's the Sun apparently that have broken a story. And as I've mentioned many times, the Sun do seem to have a bit of a hotline to somebody. Somebody, not royal family, but somebody close to the palace. Someone in the know. Because a lot of the stories, the Sun don't break stories that often. But when they do, they tend to, if you go back and look historically, you'll see. They came out with it first, and I've noticed this for years, ever since the War of the Wales is. And they say, oh, Harry's going to spend his birthday with a bunch of friends for the whole weekend and he's not going to be with Meghan. Oh, so there's not going to be a big birthday party full of A-listers. Oh, there's not going to be cake and balloons. Uh, and that he's leaving her and the children behind now. Oh, well, I mean, lots to sort of filter through. Because I do believe that with PR, they try to send subliminal messages a lot. They, or they try and, they're trying to get a message across. And to be fair to PR people, it's not easy to get a clear message across when it's a complicated situation. And to all of us, there's a lot of us. And um, to, to get everybody to understand a situation clearly, then a PR message must be short and very, very simple. Um, so... Uh, I'm I'm not thinking Vegas, you know. I mean, maybe he will. I hope wherever he goes, there will be no pap. I suspect there will not, because I suspect a certain person hasn't got a clue. Well, we will see. Of course, he could get unlucky with somebody, I don't know, some stripper with a phone uh, who might film him doing something naked. But I think he's even he's got wise to that sort of thing now. Hopefully he's in a, a safe circle of people that he can trust. And uh, I think what the guy needs is just a bit of space, head space. Just get away from it all and think long and hard. Um, well, those are my thoughts and opinions on it. I know lots of people have different thoughts and theories, but that's, that's sort of what I'm thinking. And it didn't really come as much of a surprise to me this morning to read that, that... He's going to have his birth, spend his 40th birthday alone, away from her, basically. Um, and good, good for him. Good for him. Despite everything, good for him. He's a human being, for God's sake, people. He's 
we don't want to hang him you know it's not fetch a rope let's get a pitchfork it's not like that I think what everybody would like to see probably most likely the royal family including William Catherine the king and the queen is just a bit of peace and if Harry having a weekend away with some good old buddies and just starting to put the pieces together then yes I am all for that. If that could bring about peace, if that could bring about sanity, clarity, for him to be able to sit back and look at the situation, even if he, and he is going to go through horrified moments of, oh my goodness, holy shit, what did I do? Why did I say that? Why did, I never saw it from that point of view. I wasn't thinking of it like that. Because this is the other thing. And a lot of people say, oh, it's not all Meghan's fault. Don't blame Meghan, you know, the woman thing. Well, let's pretend it was the other way around. And Harry was a woman and Meghan was a man. Oh, my God, the whole... Well, this would have come to an end a couple of years ago. Because when men are in an abusive relationship, it's it's quite often dismissed. I was actually... Graham and I were actually watching this thing last night about the murder that was um, the woman who worked for Sarah Ferguson... Uh, Sarah, Duchess of York. Graham knew nothing about it. He said, you know, this kind of thing's never happened. And I said, oh, oh don't you remember that story? I forget the woman's name, even though I watched the documentary yesterday. And I said, oh, yeah, she murdered her. She murdered this fella. I don't even think he was her boyfriend. I think she was, you know, he felt sorry for her and he let her live in his, um, his house and, and she stabbed him in the heart. Um, and she worked for uh, the Duchess of York for about 10 years as her dresser. Um, and she'd left the Duchess of York because there'd been the divorce, the York divorce. And obviously um, Sarah couldn't afford to keep staff on. So, I mean, whatever the circumstances were of this lady. And I'm beginning to forget what point it was I was making in the first place. Well, I mean, these sort of scandals, they've been happening in the royal family forever. And that, that was nothing to do with the royal family. That was. Let's hope it doesn't come to anything like that. I've completely forgotten. I'll have to watch my own video back. When I'm watching it back, I'll think, oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. And I can't remember now. Um, I'd also like to just quickly, so there's a link in the description to the author Trish Ullman. No relation to Tracy Ullman, but Trish Ullman is a playwright and author and she's done some uh, amusing Megan stuff. Um, <coughs> I've done the first person thing. Yeah, it will be interesting to see where he goes. I'm thinking some, maybe South Africa. Doesn't his uncle Charles live down in South Africa? Or maybe somewhere in the UK. There are plenty of fabulous places to go and have a spectacular time in the UK. British Isles. Wow. I can think of many, many, many places that would be wonderful. Or maybe a deserted island somewhere. Probably have to be, wouldn't it? To keep uh, certain. Um, and, and now, right. So now, we've spoken about Harry. And I might come back to him a bit. I just wanted to, again, say thank you, all of you, for emails and stuff. Um... Yeah, it was, I think it was food poisoning that I had yesterday. And Moj, the lovely Moj, who's one of us, said I needed electrolytes. And I was like, what on earth's an electrolyte? And when she messaged me and said that, I'd actually said to Graham, would you mind going to Aldi and getting me some peaches and melon and stuff like that? Because I really craved it. And I thought, I just, I can't face anything else to eat. And uh, uh, she said, oh, it's like these plop, plop, fizz, fizz things you get from the chemist. So I looked up electrolytes. Uh, what's the most what are they and what's the most food you get it in and apparently bananas which I can't stand uh, melon and peaches so there you go there you go and I felt much much better I don't think the food poisoning helped I don't think it is the menopause but I thank you very much all of you who've said that because I think I've, I went through that I mean I've been going through that for the last 10 years if you hadn't noticed on this channel but for any of you to think I'm just going into it, bless your hearts. You must think I'm a spring lamb. You really must. Oh, no, no, no. I've got the beard and the moustache and everything to prove it. I've come out the other side. And I tell you what, I'd never look back. I mean, those periods. Oh, from the day they started, I yearned for the menopause. Um, and uh, stress. Yeah, my whole life's been stress. I know I really appreciate a lot of you saying that I've been through stress recently, but trust me, being Britain's most wanted was no picnic. Um, being my mother's daughter was no picnic in the heyday. Margaret Thatcher, trust me, that was probably very stressful. And, and a whole host of other things. And like you guys, we all have stress. Everyone has stress. In fact, someone sent me a lovely email this morning and said, um, 
you know, sometimes husbands don't realise, uh, and, and Graham, bless him, you all know him. Graham, as I've always said, is a very flat character. He's, he'll just say it as it is, unfiltered completely. And um, he's not a, an emotional guy. He is not in touch with his feminine side whatsoever. Um, it, so he's not a sensitive person. Not an insensitive person, but do you know what I mean? He's not a touchy-feely sensitive. And someone emailed me and said, you know, he's lovely and everything, but I bet he doesn't realise. And it reminded me of something that we saw on the news, me and Graham. It was a guy who was something like 105 and the TV interviewer said to him, what's the secret of your success? And this guy said, I've always eaten everything that's put in front of me by any of my five wives. And the woman said, oh, five wives. He said, yeah, they died. Anyway, Graham went, oh, that's great. Well, I always eat everything you've... I said, don't you get it, Graham? Five wives are dead, but this guy's alive. Not that I'm implying that Graham's never cooked or anything like that. Or, Well, he's not a... He's definitely not a domestic goddess. Let's put it that way. So, yeah, I remember that. And this afternoon, I'm going to... I am going to crack on and I'm going to finish that uh, boat roof. Um, and then I might do another video later this afternoon because who the hell knows what stories are going to break. Um, I could really do with a friend right now like I used to have when we had our previous boat in the boatyard. 14 months, blood, sweat and tears that was. And we had a fella on the boat next to us um, called Bruce. And I love, well I didn't always love Bruce, I hated him at first. He was very critical of all of my work and every day I'd get up early uh, you know, kids are with the grannies, Graham's gone to work, I'd get my sander out and I'd be off um, doing my work and he'd come up behind me all the time and go, oh, you, you messed that up, oh, you're doing that all wrong, constantly. The guy be beasted me and beasted me and back in those days I was a lot more timid and a lot more polite and I'd just be, ignore him, Fiona, ignore him. I wanted to sand his face, I really did after a few months of it. Anyway, bit by bit, I took it, I took it. But the more he criticised me, the harder I worked on the boat. And the day before the launch, he said to me, I am so bloody proud of you. He said, I've been on your case. He said, I've been on every boat owner's case. And all the men have cried like little bitches. You're the only one. You never bit, took the bait and you just got on with it. We were best of friends, actually. Um, it, it, I did warm to him in the end. But I guess that's what I really need. And in a manner of speaking, a lot of you guys, although you don't take the Bruce approach, you, you give me words of encouragement and keep me going. And if you hadn't kept me going the last two years, believe me, I wouldn't have done half the stuff on the boat that I've done. Not even half of it. I would have just vegetated watching the telly and, and just watching it rot around me. Honestly, probably would have abandoned it. And again, that is thanks to you guys. It, it does. It feels like we're all having a coffee morning together. So where do you all think Harry's gone? Hey, where have you gone, Hazza? No, don't tell us. Don't tell anybody. Don't let there be any leaks, Harry. This is your moment. Eat, drink and be merry, my friend, for tomorrow you divorce. Thank you all very much for listening.